Our climate is changing. There's not much doubt about that. And there is some really important research that's being done right here in Western New York to look at what we can expect specifically. Our Michael Wooten explains in this Two on Your Side original. So often when we talk about climate change, it devolves into this. Climate hysteria. The time is up. Our house is on fire. I don't think it's a hoax. I think there's probably a difference. This story isn't that. We're focused on the science and what these three researchers at the University of Buffalo have found looking specifically at what climate change could mean here in Western New York. The earth is warming. Buffalo isn't immune, but to be clear, that's not to say we're done with winter. Freezing cold outside. Remember, it wasn't long ago that February 2015 was the coldest month ever recorded here. The temperatures dipped below zero on 10 different days. But the longer term trend is for warmer temperatures. How warm? One analysis of findings from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change found just 30 years from now, Buffalo's average temperature will be similar to present-day Louisville, Kentucky, a city some 500 miles to our southwest. 30 years, that's not that far off. It's well within our lifetime. Nick Rakovich from UB is a climate adaptation expert. He's part of a team cataloging every single building in New York State, millions of them, to gauge their climate readiness. Here in Buffalo, the census actually estimates that we have the oldest building stock in the country. What kind of challenge does that present in preparing for climate change? You know, you have buildings that go back into the 19th century that have different construction materials, and a lot of them aren't well insulated, things like that. Many don't have air conditioning, for instance, something that with rising temperatures could become a life or death necessity. Although Dr. Rakovich is quick to say cranking up the AC isn't always the answer, considering the greenhouse gas emissions. Buffalo's actually never had a 100 degree Fahrenheit day. Mm -hmm. So how we prepare for that, how we make sure our cities and buildings are prepared for that is, is a major challenge going forward. Besides the heat, we should also prepare for more of this. If Western New York warms as expected, Lake Erie will freeze over less often, like it is now. And you guessed it, that means the potential for more lake effect snow. So we're going into the instrument side of the lab. When Elizabeth Thomas isn't studying samples here at UB, she's traveling the globe collecting more of them. Most of my research has been in the Arctic. That area is warming much more rapidly than the rest of the world, and that has a direct impact here. The Arctic is warming so much that the temperature gradient between low and high latitudes is weakening and that causes the jet stream, which sort of isolates really cold Arctic air. That jet stream is weaker and it wobbles and allows really cold Arctic air to make its way down here in Buffalo. So think about that. Warmer overall, increased likelihood of an unfrozen Lake Erie, and then more bursts of brutally cold Arctic air. That's the literal recipe for lake effect snow. The laser beam. Dr. Thomas' research at UB is centered around testing Arctic sediment samples taken from deep below Lake Lake beds. Those sediment cores, that's mud at the bottom of the lake that's laid down through time. And so the surface of the mud was is very recently deposited. And the deeper down you go, the farther back you go. By testing those samples in the lab, she can essentially go back in time to learn about the precipitation that fell in the past, including during time periods thousands of years ago when the earth was warmer. Is that something that we can use to help us predict what's going to happen here in Buffalo in the future? Lake Erie is key to more than just snow. We don't realize how rare, you know, this kind of environment is globally. Trevor Krabenhoff studies how climate change impacts aquatic life in fresh water, and the warming world is already having an effect. The changes are here already. Um, we've seen shifts in timing, for example, of reproduction. So fish that spawn in the spring are now spawning earlier and earlier. The growth rates, how fast fish are growing is changing, the food sources. And so there have already been a lot of impacts of climate change. Before you say, why should I care about fish reproduction or aquatic food sources, keep in mind the Great Lakes Basin supplies more than 80% of North America's surface freshwater. Warming lakes increase the chances for harmful algal blooms and other dangers. What happens here affects us all. Sort of the canary in the coal mine of mm. what's happening. And so if if fish populations are crashing, we might be concerned about that for other reasons as well. One of the many concerns as the world warms and Western New York wonders what the future will bring. 
So that brings us right to part two of this story, which will air tomorrow. So it turns out, even though there are certainly some potentially negative impacts from climate change mm -hmm. here in western New York, because of how far north we're located, and especially because of the Great Lakes being right here, we are a place that one Harvard expert thinks could be the best in the hemisphere for people who are impacted by climate change really? to move to. We could see climate refugees. Um, he actually said it in, in one speech, 15, 20,000 people may be moving to Buffalo. So what's and the opportunity so there? And we so much fresh water also, too. That, that's a right big here. player in all this, that absolutely. Is a huge it's interesting. Player. Yeah. I mean, I think we just all assumed it was going to get warmer, but not necessarily according to this report. So yeah. can't wait. Every now and then you get these cold bursts. It's yeah. kind of yeah. crazy. Looking forward to part two. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. Yep. Appreciate it, Michael. Let's check in with. Uh,